Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, everybody. <laughs> no, Father Mark Perry. Sorry. Father Angelus. Sorry about and that. Father Innocent. Sorry about Father that. PT. Father PT wants to begin with an apology. First of all, <laughs> this doesn't come easily, but uh, I'm sorry, Father Innocent. I I attacked you. Why unfairly. are you sorry? I, why are you sorry, Father PT? My man, this is my apology. <laughs> Don't make me apologize again for something else. <laughs> Don't make this harder than it is. <laughs> I attacked you unfairly um, last you, episode. Yep, yep, you did. I felt it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Esau and Jacob are actually twins. <laughs> I have the scripture in front of me here. Bro, the look you gave me when I asked him. <laughs> it, it, it was. And it developed into, you're not paying attention during right. class. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. was, it became a thing. I and mean, you're writing thank you notes in class. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that wasn't true. <laughs> but what was true was the fact that I attacked you unfairly. And I apologize. I'm sorry. And the unfairness was because I was right. You were right. You were <laughs> they're, right. They're twins. Jacob and Esau were twins. This is when you say, I forgive you. I, <laughs> I, I mean, you don't. if it's inauthentic, I don't want it. I want your no, authentic, I really, I'm sorry. I'm going to choose the higher road here and just really choose to forgive you and see you in your weakness, Father <laughs> PP. So this is, I, I feel this. The sad thing is I will be reminded of this for the next 10 years. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> but thank you. I we're done. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, you're welcome, bro. Yeah. We're, we're done, Father Mike Ray. You can. We should all apologize because we all missed it. Hey, look, I came out strong, though. I was like the, like, you know, burn him at the stake. Get him, boys. <laughs> ah, he's wrong. He doesn't like scripture. He doesn't like Jesus. Like, he went down that road, and I was the voice behind it. I'm sorry. I forgive you, bro. Well, I it's still good that you're here. Follow people. <laughs> Thank you. But we're going to put you back on timeout. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put me on timeout, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, do you guys have any, any thoughts? For the audience, any invitations to the audience? Anything? Oh, we they definitely want to continue to get the book Habits for Holiness: Small Steps for Making Big Spiritual Progress by Mother Father Mark Mary. <laughs> <laughs> my mother, my mother, Mother Margaret Mary. I mean. My Father Mark Dash Mary Maximilian <laughs> Ames CFR. Do you pronounce the dash when you say your name every time? Yeah, um, we definitely want to keep ordering those and keep selling those out. How's that? Thank you. That was really good. <laughs> you are uh, natural. You called him Mother Mark Mary. <laughs> Uh, where can they find those? Uh, ascensionpress.com backslash, backslash backslash holy holiness holiness or backslash habits. Habits. habits habits either one actually it works out well amazing funny story is when we, we were in Nebraska with your nephews and they came up to me one day and were like hey Father Mark <laughs> because they listen to the podcast and they know that I give you guys a hard time did about they, calling me Father Mark did someone also uh, ask if Mary. you were the backup priest <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, yeah, yeah. it was uh, Sam because he's like, oh, you're a priest too? Because Father Innocent and I were doing the mission and we were the two priests there at the time. And Father Sam was like, oh, you're a priest too? So you're like the backup priest? <laughs> the backup yeah. priest, the Father Innocent. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I'm the backup priest. I heard priest. that. That's awesome. That's awesome. What a stud. Sam. You're definitely not the backup here, Father Mark Mary. Mm -mm. Thank you. That's because, yeah, I had to create some space where I could be in charge. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, that doesn't just happen in life, you know? Everyone sure. just walks right by me. <laughs> You want to console me? This is really the place nope. to do this. I don't want to console you. <laughs> this is really the place to do this? Father, and it's, oh, what else we can, it's our birthday month. Still our birthday month. Yeah, you, you can send gifts. <laughs> That's a birthday horn. That was like a light birthday horn. I don't want to spike the mic like Father Innocent does. I do all the time. At least <laughs> I don't have me. Isn't that better? Yeah, that's Father better. PT, you're here for sound effects. <laughs> is that what I've been reduced to? The sound effects guy? I mean, those are important. Yeah. So can you sing a song and do some sound no, effects? No, I'm not going to like on command, sing a song. Entertain us, please. No. I swear. <laughs> there you go. Swoops and dips. Both of these guys do swoops and dips. Getting back to your musical theaters days. What does this have anything to do with me? Both of you guys. You guys are packaged. Can we talk about that Esau father? Jacob. Can we talk about the fact that Father Innocent was the lead in every musical he was in? Is that true? He was Jesus in Godspell. Mm. I was, was Jesus in Godspell. He was That's in like Pirates of Penzance and Crazy for You. Mm. What were you, Father Angelus? <laughs> well, let's talk let's about Father Angelus. <laughs> this, this is pretty much the story of my life. I was in the ensemble. <laughs> you guys, I'm okay with that. I, I'm a, you know what? I was, I was, can I just I say, was I was in the I was, ensemble. I was on the, uh, I was watching something about Michael Jordan on the plane when mm -hmm. we were traveled recently. And there was an episode about Steve Kerr and he was like, I would just own the fact that I'm a role player. I got that. This is, I know what role I have here. And I'm okay with that. And that's not coming from like this wounded place. I'm really serious. You, I was a part of the ensemble. Are you sure <laughs> that it wasn't the part where Jordan says, and I took that personally, 
And like he goes on to destroy everybody. <laughs> like he's been burning with. <laughs> I don't remember that. But anyway, the point was is that I was. You know your role, bro. You know your role. I've got rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> See? Everyone so in this in this at, in this podcast can sing except for one of us. Mm. I'm um, not going to say any names, but I pointed at him. <laughs> we have video now, so I don't have. I don't have. I mean, but I appreciate you. you trying sometime, bro. Like sometime in mass when I don't expect it, you bring it out. I'm really. It Maybe adds just fine, literally bro. one time. <laughs> the doxology when other people are there but it's that's memorable. the only time it comes out but i like the doxology because like through him and with him and in like it gives a little space for me to tell you a to figure out where <laughs> you're going carry you bro right. that's they, what happens right. to carry you they it's carry good you. <laughs> to be to be samwise gamji to your frodo you know <laughs> um sometimes i tried i try with benediction sometimes you know and, it's, and i did it this is the thing I share a talk in the mission about like the hard part about coming to the friars and having to sing in public for the first time and all that. And then I do benediction at a parish mission when often even I wouldn't sing, but it's like, you know, it's like, I just gave this talk Talked about being about, okay yeah, yeah. with being weak in front of in public. And so I feel like I have to, you really recite that part. I, you have given them bread from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> no, that part, that part. I, you can't chant that. <laughs> yes, I, I can do that part, and you I can have do let given us pray. Them bread from heaven. <laughs> That's like oh, trust me. Why no? <laughs> By the way, I don't know if this is going too deep down the rabbit hole, but I was in about two years or one year of musical lessons with you. <laughs> <laughs> you were my partner, yeah. right? I was just going to we were an ensemble. How's your partner or your crutch? I, I can't <laughs> figure that out. <laughs> All right, but it's bad. I'm sorry. That's all I'm gonna say. Before well, our producer gets upset, did she ask you if you had a problem? Did she like the music yeah, teacher asked if you had a problem? Did she yeah, ask if you she smoke? Asked if, she asked if you smoke. No, I don't smoke. Do you have some sort of like <laughs> biological issue? <laughs> I don't think so. I just think I'm never. I'm not good at this. I probably do. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. But anyway, I tried singing. Sometimes it doesn't usually work. There's a reason. Yeah, Musica okay. Sacra, Musica Sacrum 78, I think is what it says. If the priest does not have a voice suitable for singing, they may re, re, recite it in a clear, plain voice. You Remember just cited the magisterium to I defend really? your inability. Sorry, some of us pay attention Whoa. in class. Whoa. Whoa. Another hey, shot, bro. Hey, You're going to have to hey, apologize at the beginning of the next episode. We have moved on. <laughs> Haven't we learned from my failures and my faults? <laughs> yes, we don't yeah. attack people about their time in seminary. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Unless, you know, you happen to thrive in seminary. Oh, yeah. I don't think we ever got around Chucky. to it, but I, I'll bring it back. If you could give donations, that would be extremely helpful. Yeah, to, that would to, be helpful. To actually. this podcast. If we get enough donations, maybe I'll get some singing lessons. <laughs> but if lot. we get enough donations, we can keep this podcast going. That's the thing. That is actually the truth. That's thing. a real thing. Back, or back or, dot org, spiritjuice.org mm. backslash poco poco. Spirit juice. <laughs> We'd be grateful, and we're grateful because this is only possible because of people's generosity. Father, Anderson, here's what the people of God want. The yeah. people of God heard you talking about living from the inside, and the people of God are like, what the heck does that mean? I like it. I'm interested in it. I'm intrigued. I want it. I don't quite get it. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? So you're referring to a talk I gave recently to Focus. And so I'm going to tell you about that. And we're all going to unpack that together. Can we say hi to the, our focus Hello, missionary friends? Hello, all you focus people, Brendan Pawn, and all you focus people from what region? Uh, they call it the Pawn region, but Pond. it's uh, Missouri, Iowa, cool. part of Michigan. Well, I was, that was my, one of my first focus talks ever I, that was invited. I'd never been invited before to speak to focus. And why are you and, looking at me? Well, just because you're always invited to speak to focus. So anyway, I had a, it was really, I was really humbly, humble and blessed to be able to speak with him. And I just spoke from this own experience I had in prayer recently with my own spiritual director. We're, we're vulnerable on these podcasts, but I think it's a, it was just a really powerful, powerful word for me. And it was, there was a lot of light on it. And so I shared it with them and I'm going to share it as a starting place for us. <clears throat> and it's simple. It's this, right? Like, um, as you know, a couple months ago, we were in Lent, right? And, and I think the invitation to go in, into the desert, we talked about a lot about that with the Lord and it's, it's in relationship with Jesus. And Jesus wants us to show us, he wants to show us something about his father. Right, he wants to show us what his heart experiences when he's with the Father, and especially in this vulnerable place of the desert, to to be dependent and to receive everything from him and the Father's love and his identity that he received at, at, at every moment of his life. And I think I think the thing is this: that Jesus lived from this place constantly. That's not a surprise for the Son of God, but but he chose and he and he and he lived from this place of intimacy of his own heart from the inside. Right, God, the Father, wasn't an abstract idea, and and. And we know that, but, but as, 
as disciples and, and, and sons and daughters of God, we are also called to live from the inside of Jesus's own heart. And so when, when I was in spiritual direction a couple weeks ago and talking about this and, and my own spiritual director said, Father, sometimes I think you're tempted to, to settle that you have to live from the outside. And I wanna encourage you and I wanna bless you with the truth that you were called to live from the inside, to, to live from the inside of Jesus's own heart and to experience this place of being known and loved and being able to live in relationship with the Father, to, to experience it on the inside, right? And so that, that, that was a huge grace for me because I think that's the call for all of us. This is what intimacy is, is experiencing life and love and, 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 the, and the deepest desires of our hearts, our weakness from the inside of Jesus's heart, from, from this relationship that, that is everything for us, right? And I think this is where we wanna invite our listeners is that we don't want to be bystanders. We don't want, like I, I think I said in that talk, like we're not just coworkers with Jesus, we're somehow, there remains like a separation. Like, okay, well, it's kind of me and Jesus. And you know, like you, Jesus kind of does his thing and I do mine and we're kind of living in this kind of coexistent kind of reality. Like we're not coworkers with Jesus brothers. That's not what discipleship is. That's not what baptism is, right? Baptize, we're baptized sons and daughters of God. We, the, the, the Trinity in, dwell, it dwells in us. There's an indwelling of the life of God in us. That is not something that's like abstract or far away or somehow accessory to our lives. This is living on the inside, the indwelling Trinity. And I could say more, but I think that's the starting place where as we dive into habits for holiness, we, we start from this place of intimacy, living from the inside of Jesus's own heart. That's real, that's possible, that's truth. That's all I got. You guys remember uh, the awesome, first of all, you gave that talk and uh, you talked about Lazarus in that talk. I'd love to like, but I was, I was like from the back and I was like, holy cow, that's awesome. When it's good to know I still move you. I, yeah, that's yeah. basically what I was saying. It's like, wow, that was really moving. Like, that's actually <laughs> you pretty- said You like made a, a you like, like you a, did your little snap thing or whatever yeah, it was, was like, you did. Whoa. Anyway, I want to come back to that in a second, but to, to add to your point, um, you guys remember the story Father Rich Ferris from the seminary tells about, uh, and I don't know if it was his story or not, but like at, the, at Pentecost, like there was a general confusion of Our Lady when she saw all the apostles because she was like, I'm confused because like, I see Jesus. Hmm. And she, when, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, she was like walking around. She was like, oh my gosh, you remind me of my son. And so there's, there's, because of the Holy Spirit, because of our baptism, there's this radical conformity and this holy confusion that, that when, when the Holy Spirit's within us, it's Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the way we live. This is the, the oneness and the unity we're called to live. And people can, can people be genuinely confused when they encounter us? Mm-hmm. Because it's not, again, Jesus on the outside, it's not Jesus somewhere else, but like, wow, Jesus is within that person. And I'm tempted to like, think, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I think some people are confused when they see you too. Thank you. It's nice of you to mention that. <laughs> Which one are you, Katie or? <laughs> <laughs> the, why, why this is important to me? So, cause why, again, why we're, we're leading with this, leading into Habits for Holiness is the first chapter is prayer. And I don't want to, cause that's where it begins. And I don't want to like, just jump in. Ju- I don't want, I don't want to like kind of, Oh, like, um, like, Oh, okay. You start with prayer. But like there, no, like that's, that's important. Cause sometimes, particularly if you're in ministry, right. Something like that is you can, it's super easy to start with mission and you start with the problem. Like you start with, <clears throat> with problems you're going to solve. And even this is like the, the, I think the edgy thing, which would probably need some, some distinction or nuance is, like it's about it's about salvation, but it, but it's like it is about salvation. But it, it's it's about salvation because like salvation is a love thing, right? It's not just like this cold, dutiful like okay, we're gonna like try and get you, like we're just like coldly getting people out of hell so that they don't have punishment. Like it's it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 from a place of love, and the more that we have this love and this intimacy and this relationship, like that overflows into our mission of salvation. Um. And, and just cause like, I think if you, if you, if you put mission, if you put mission first and uh, you prioritize that it, it might end up being at the cost of your own formation and your own relationship with the Lord. And you can turn into this coworker. And so you're like out in the vineyard and you're whatever it is you're picking, you're, you're saving stuff or souls, but, but it's like, but the Lord doesn't want you just like out there doing it on your own. Like he wants you living from the inside, I think. And he wants to live from the inside of you. Can you guys help kind of flesh that out and, and um, make sense of that and why, if that's true? 
Yeah, no. Um, I think it goes back to, not to bring it back to, to you, but about the doxology, right? <laughs> <laughs> through him with him and in him mm. right mm. it has to can, be can nice get, one can we just I'm chant that together uh-huh. or we chant that together yeah. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is unvulnerable we're all um, vulnerable that's okay bro we love you I'm and your fine. vulnerability i'm fine no but honestly like it's the high point of the mass right i forgot who it was maybe one of our priests said <clears throat> if at every point in time any point in time you're you lose your voice at mass the only point that you want to say anything is like at that amen like the through him with him after the doxology, because you say amen to everything that we just talked about in the Eucharistic prayer. Um, and that's obviously a summation of our faith, but it has to be through him, with him, and in him. You know, like those very important prepositions are, aren't just put there for a reason, but like they are actually how we live. And it, and it can't be beside, it's not besides him, it's not um, above him, but it's through him, with him, and in him that we, we are able to be who we are as church. Yeah, I'm all that. about that. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm all about that. You nailed that. Key contribution. Right? Hey, look. <laughs> Key God. contribution. Usually Ange does that. But oh, BT. <clears throat> I just want to add that too. Like mm-hmm. just the question of, and I think I, I, I bring this up, this word up pretty consistently, but like the challenge is, is that how do we not get burnt out? And how do, we, how do we sustain That's it? Right. How do we sustain it? And so the coworkers, can I, can I, can we say that if you're a coworker with Christ, it's not sustainable? Yeah. Right. And if you're really talented, you might, you might last longer than others, or you're really gifted. If there's a lot of exterior things going on that get you f- a particular place, that might be possible. But if it's not from the inside, if it's not interior, if it's not through him, with him, and in him, I, I'm not quite sure how sustainable that right. is. And therefore, if we're obsessed with ministry and it becomes about um, totally being out there, doing it, totally diving in and it kind of doing all that, I'm not quite sure how long that can last. And I, and I, uh, what I'd add to that, if we just, we all recognize, and I think the, no matter what vocation you're in, you recognize that life's demanding, right? So whether you're in ministry, right? But but the moms and dads that are out there, right? Their, their life is demanding, but to be a mom or to, to be a biological mom of children is not easy, right? But, but the, the, the identity of mother or the identity of father, that, that assumes that you're living in this relationship, receiving the, you're in this place of, of, of receiving from, from the father. Right. So that's how it's sustainable. Right? right. Like we're living in this place and we're receiving the relationship identity from father, from God, our father. Right. And in the Lord living from the inside, Jesus inside of us and us inside of Jesus. Right. Then moms and dads have this place where they're not just like biological moms and dads to children, their offspring, but, but they're really instruments of God. They're instruments of salvation. They're instruments of teaching. They're instruments of blessing. Right. And that's, I think what we're talking about is that, it, that's what's, yeah, that's what moves me. So often when we meet families, you're like, whoa, like there is, there's something like divine here. There's an anointing on a motherhood or a fatherhood because they, they live in relationships, they live in prayer. And I think that's the encouragement, right? A lot of, a lot of the, probably the majority of the people who, who li- listen to this podcast are, are married or mothers and fathers are called to get married. And I, and I, that's our, that's our encouragement to, to everyone listening is that if we re, if we start in this place of prayer, you live an anointing of motherhood and fatherhood, that's different because it's too hard. Otherwise, like, like, like we talk about Katie and Brian all the time. Like, I, I don't know how they do it, but it's, but it's like, it's a beautiful thing when there's this anointing and you're like, Whoa, like there's something happening here that the gospel's coming alive here because the, all this kind of is in place or they fight for it. They fight for the prayer because then their motherhood and their father become become something different. Right. We we talk about like I am the vine, you are the branches. Like remain in me. That's what the Lord is inviting us to again and again. It's, it's remain in me, right? And um and and again, like why we want to start here, looking into the habits for holiness, which is a book of, of responses in, in many ways, is is um what we like the problem if we can go that way, often our problem, it's not just like, it can be a categorical problem. It can be a foundational problem insofar as like, we're trying, it's not just like, we're like trying to do all of these things and we like need to do these external things better, but we're doing them wrong. If we're doing them outside of relationship, if we don't begin with and live from this relationship through him, with him, in him, and we're trying to like make all these changes and save ourselves, save the world, blah, 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 this and that, like we're, we're just, we're kind of, we're, we're not, set up for success. Like if we're not doing it from the right place, which is from this relationship in the pocket. In the, the pocket, pocket right here, right here. <laughs> in the pocket, bro, stay in the pocket. Right. 
Sorry. No, it's okay. I do you want to share something? Yeah. I have my back to you, so I apologize for the know, times you, I cut you off. You always have your back to me. Um, <laughs> just about prayer. You want to hug? Uh, not really. You're no, not I'm really. Good. No, I'm good. Don't, don't try for my grace. Thank you. Just about living out of this relationship and um and not yeah remaining in the relationship with Jesus. I have this cheat sheet. I was looking over it with the guys before during show prep, and uh, it's from a retreat. But just a line that speaks to me is um, make sure prayer is not routine. And it's a marriage, you know what I mean? Cause like we oftentimes fall into the routine of prayer or whatever it is. And just, it's not like, you know, bearing fruit in a relationship where like marriage, like, okay, I'm given over to this other person. I'm totally given over to them and mm -hmm. I'm all about them, you know? And even marriage can sometimes fall into a routine, but when marriage is dynamic and marriage is like, okay, there's this beautiful thing about my husband or my wife that I love. And that's what drives me crazy about them. But at the same time, that's what made me fall in love with them. <laughs> it's something that's dynamic. It's something that's yeah. real. It's something that's always um, just changing your heart. And sometimes if we live our life or we have a prayer life that's void of Jesus or void of, you know, just actually living in that relationship, it could become more routine. Okay, I gotta pray my rosary today. Okay, I gotta do these these set prayers. But what we're offering is a relationship, a real relationship that's transformative, yeah. a real relationship that bring, calls you deeper and it's attractive and it's beautiful, you know, and it's life changing. And it, conf it, it confirms your identity. You know, it's something that is, okay, you are my son, you are my daughter, you're a father, you're a mother, you're single, wherever you are, the Lord wants to, you know, just love on you in a real mm, way, yeah. just, just in a beautiful way. Um, but that happens in prayer. It happens in that real relationship, which is more like, like a marriage where yeah. you're just totally in love with the other person. And if I could just say like the word that kind of came, like was moving in me was, it's, it's kind of hard or maybe it's provocative or a new way to do that. But if it's a marriage, right? Like it's hard for us to realize that like God sets his eyes on us. Like, like we're kind of his beloved, mm -hmm. right? There's a whole book set aside in the, in the Bible of song, the song of songs, right? Speak to me. Like the reality of like, have you written songs about this? Brother Father Tansi has. Whoa. <laughs> it, it's, it's not like we're his beloved. We, we actually, are, are. Yeah, and I'm we sorry. Are. Yeah, we, and are, we, yeah, we are. It's not just imagery, but yeah. it's true, right? So living this beloved, like you, can you receive the the truth that you're beloved mm -hmm. of, yeah. of the father? He sets his eyes on you, his, like he, his heart, his whole heart, the heart of God has moved in the person of Jesus for you. Right. Can you receive, can we receive that? You are beloved. And is Jesus your beloved? Mm -hmm. Like, are you willing to, to live in this intimacy, realizing before you can love your brothers, before you can love your husband, your wife, your friends, like if you don't have this, if you're not in this relationship, if you're disoriented at all, there's gonna be a ripple effect, right? right? And I think that's what we wanna try to say radically is that if we are in the pocket and, and we're with the Lord, then everything else makes sense and everything is oriented in the right way. But if we don't, right, if we don't believe this truth and receive from this place, then our life is, we live a life of disorientation. We're, we're, something's just off and we're kind of imposters, right? We, we hide. Right. Um, and I, I would accuse myself of the first, that, that firstly, like we hide and then we be, we, something's off. Deacon Keating has this great line just to the, the beloved, like the, the, we, we sin when we turn away from the beloved. We sin when we turn away and the ultimate experience of the one who always faces his beloved was Jesus on the cross, right? I, and I, ever since I read that line and been doing some articles and study of him, like from Deacon Keating, is that I well, it will come up in my prayer now. Like when I'm tempted to back away, when I'm tempted to turn away, when I'm tempted to be less generous, when I'm tempted to hide, when, like face the beloved. Mm -hmm. You're like, beloved. you know, and, and face my, face him, you know, and face the Lord face, and, and always have this posture to lean into facing him, yeah. which is the gift of husband and wife to face one another, you know, it's just beautiful. And I, I kind of, I realize when I, when I want to turn away right. and it's just a good kind of examination. It's like, no, lean in face, face the one who loves you, face the one who sees you, face the one who wants, desires to give you intimacy, you know? So it's great. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, scripture quotes ever of all time is uh, song six, three, I am my beloved and he is mine. You mm -hmm. know, like I am my beloved and he is mine. And, that, and that's right there. It's, it, it says it all for me right there. You know that, okay, I'm Jesus and he's mine, you know, and just in that relationship there, I don't need anything else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's something where we have to stay there. Um, as we're talking about, we have to sit there and just allow ourselves to be loved from that place because it's, it's so often that we go outside of that place to be loved, yep. you know? It's and that's so the often. call for everybody. Right. I mean, that's beautiful. Like that's, right. that is the call for everybody mm -hmm. to live in this place of intimacy with the Lord. Right. Yeah, and, and having a dynamic relationship with him is prayer, like and talking to your beloved and talking to him and, and just speaking your heart and pouring out your heart, your desires, everything is, that's prayer, you know, and that's where we wanna be. I, one of, 
Would you like to say something, Father? <laughs> say it. After you, Father Angelus. I'm gonna. Uh, I had a thought earlier about routine. I was just gonna throw out there. So if mm-hmm. I don't want to change the actually, the vibe. I just comment on that yeah, real please. quick. And I had a experience with the Apostles recently. Um, that I love being like the stay-at-home dad. I love being the father to them. Um, I recently met some of their parents, and so I just say that because it's a, it's an incredible gift to meet them and to to be to be a, like a spiritual father to to them. But it's it's beautiful in this context because, uh, like I can't I can't save them. Like I can't like I'm not the one that like can fix them. Like it has to be the Lord, right? And so so recently I've been having this experience with them where they'll come to me after a tough day, and you can assume a lot of things, but you just need to say like, hey, let's bro, do. Did, did you talk to the Lord about this before you came to me? And usually it's like, okay, in prayer, or, or sometimes they'll say, you know, bro, like, Father, I struggled. And, and, and so like, and I'm like, well, why don't you start there? Like, why don't you start, like start with the Lord and then, then come to me, mm-hmm. right? Because it's start with your beloved. Right. And you might, it's, it might be really difficult and you might, you're not going to get figured out, but I, I need you to go be with him first. Because then you can come talk to me and that's just going to make a lot more sense and we can work through this out. And I think the passion was like, yeah, yeah, that make that makes sense to me, even though it's like hard because it's it is like a labor of love sometimes. But but I just want to encourage like I'm not, I would never give anyone marital advice. Mm-hmm. But I think that'd be all, but just beautiful to be like to 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 for husband and wife to to make sure that before like again you're facing your beloved who is your spouse in life and in marriage, but to know that there's a space for that, but like, Hey, do you talk to the Lord about this first or, 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 or did like, do you plan on it? Right. Like however that works, because I think that's what we're saying that like the first stop has to be the Lord. Right. It has to be your beloved who knows you, who sees you deeper than anybody else. So again, I don't know the best advice, but to know that, that, that there's a step along the way to be like, Hey, listen, we need to, we need to talk to the Lord about this. And then coming back together will just be more fruitful and, and, and it just makes more sense that way. Right. I was just gonna throw out there this routine. I think we can get in scripture, like routine with scriptures as well. And uh, Father Mark Mary's favorite story of the prodigal son. Um, uh, <laughs> I you love the prodigal <laughs> son gospel. Yeah. I have issues with its popular here. depiction. But I think to, to, to use that image to, to affirm what you were saying too, like we, the, the younger son wanted the inheritance without the relationship. And I think especially in with a lot of young people today, we get excited about what Jesus can do for me. And we get excited about the gifts of the father. We get excited about all these things that, that can happen and we can easily or quickly, you know, not be attentive to the fact that it, it comes in mm-hmm. a relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I, I do wanna be healed and I do wanna thrive and I do wanna do all these things, but it's like, Lord, I want my inheritance. I want what you created me to be, but I'm not quite convinced that I actually have to be in relationship with you over a long period of time to experience like the flourishing that you want to give me. And so I think this, this is kind of where it's at. Like I, I want, we make demands of the father so then I can go off and, and, and live a blessed life. Yeah, no, yeah. and then it's just dope because that's a, a good story. But right when the sun is away, um, he thinks about, okay, I just go back and be a servant. He comes back. What happens, Father Mark Mary, when he's coming back? Is he's in at a distance. He's he, in, does he run? He runs. Run? Okay, cool. It's <laughs> very important that he runs. He does not stand and he gets the dirty. Right. He gets dirty. He gets dirty and, and sweaty. He and yeah, 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 yeah. And ugly crying. But he does not. <laughs> ugly, snotty crying. Yeah. But the yeah. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is that he says, my son who was dead is now alive. You know, mm-hmm. not, not this person, not this kid, not this ungrateful, ungrateful, whoever it is, but my son. And so I think the son in his misery remembers his identity, or yep. at least is trying to grasp it back at his identity. And it's, and it's once he's back with the father in his embrace in the, in the father's house, my son, you know, and so that identity yeah. is reaffirmed. And, and the father says at mm-hmm. the end, but obviously in reference to the older son is all mm-hmm. that I have is yours. Right. Well, can, can you just go there real quick? I, the, the younger son or the older son stays at home. So it's almost like he's trying to have the relationship without the inheritance. Yeah. Oh. So it's like the, it's just like the inverse right. where it's just like, he's at home, but he can't receive the gift. So he can't receive the so gift. So he resents it. He resents all the, it know, might be a stretch, but I think the there's gifts, something there you know? where he's at home and he's like, okay, I, I see the father every day, but, but there's a block to receiving the inheritance. Yeah. Right. So it's just like son being sons and daughters. It's mm-hmm. like, if we have to start with the father, no matter if you're running away or if you're mm-hmm. staying, right. <laughs> we have to start with the father. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in the the invitation to to reconcile the invitation to, to always come back to the to what's most important, the primacy of of being his son. Right. And and the what the gifts then come from that, you know, in this both, place of, right? of intimacy. Whether we're stayed home and resent it all, or we, we <laughs> left we left and and would rather not be in proximity to to the one right. you know who who provides for us. Everybody kind of finds themselves in different places at different times, but the invitation back to the one who pursues us and longs for us and waits for us. I mean, and that's, that's, isn't that it? Like he's waiting. Um, and he wants us to keep, keep coming back, but it's beautiful. Like, and I think a lot of us find ourselves there. I'm, I'm totally interested in what God can do for me, but it might actually recognize that it actually happens in this place where I make a commitment to being in relationship. With him. I think that I've, I think that was like legendary. Mm-hmm. Just that um, I think, and I think that's well said is, is when we do, we live mission or we like idolize or, or, or give it too much attention broken from the relationship is that's 100%. It's like we were living like we want our inheritance or spending our inheritance without the relationship. Mm. Right. And so that can happen certainly like, okay, I've, I've done this sweet Bible study. Right. And so now I'm going to go and I've got like a cool personality and I give good talks. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to like, I'm going to give all these talks. I'm going to be like super cool. And I'm going to have like the biggest Bible studies in the world. I'm going to have 50 people in discipleship and, but I'm not going to like pray. It's like, I'm going to use all this. I'm going to use all these gifts I have and my inheritance and I'm going to do all this stuff. But, but are you, is is that at the expense of or without relationship? And I think definitely for us, it's probably as priests, it's like, um, we've received an inheritance, which is like objective, particularly through sacramental ministry, our, our objective capacity to celebrate mass, to hear confessions, right? And there's there's 100% for us gonna be a temptation to like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all this stuff, right? And, I, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use my, which is like a super important, like they're not like, you know, I'm gonna use this, this inheritance I've been given by my ordination. But we, if we do it without relationship, that's, there's a lot of, that's, that's a problem, right? It's dangerous. And, and there's a temptation, like we, we recently had a vocation visitor who just really like was just really inspired by our life and he had never been here and it was all new for him. And he's like, you guys like do that every morning, you know, like silence and prayer. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, we, we do that every morning. And he's like, and it was surprising to him mm-hmm. that, that like, what does it mean to be consecrated? Right. And, and so, but we know that we are called to live this way for the sake of our, our relationship so we can live our mission. Right. Like we, we waste time in prayer like we make that a priority f- for the sake of the mission. And so that's like the encouragement of like, for, for everyone listening is that like, don't be afraid. Like, and, and even we have to be courageous to say, no, like I have to make time to be with my beloved, to be with Jesus. I have to make time to read the word of God because then it's like that wasting of time that I know flows into every part of my life. Cause there's, there's a temptation to make excuses or there's a lot going on. And again, the demand of, of life and vocation. But if we don't do that, and if we don't make the time to be with the Lord, that's when I think things can, it can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. Right. I have no authority to make this claim, but I wonder if it's, if it's better to, to talk about it, not as separate things, like relationship, identity, mission. Cause somehow then it's like, I mean, it's true when I live in my relationship and I experience this, the gift of who I am, I then bear fruit in my mission. But it's like, it's somehow, rejoicing in the intimacy with God and, and who I become in that become my mission, like become this space in me that, that I'm then in that I'm just able to bear fruit. There's no, maybe it, do we keep them disconnected too much? The praying is my mission. Hmm. You know, living in relationship with, with God is my mission. And I, I don't want it to be separate from what I do in the morning. And then I go to breakfast. I, I don't want the distinctions. I don't want, it's just interesting. I don't know because we talk about them completely separately, but. We're not, I'm, I'm with you 100%. I don't really know that the, the language will be super precise, but like when we talk about our own life, I do think that the, if you will, like the product of the CFR way of life is the quality of the friar, right? And it's the quality of the friar who, who knows who he is, who knows the Lord, who's in that relationship that goes out into the mission, right? Mm-hmm. And so the effectiveness, if you will, of what we do out there is going to be the fruit of who we are at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And, and, but most importantly, it's, it's like who we are as far as knowing who we are and as far as like our, um, being filled with with the Lord and allowing the Lord to live our, his life through us. And I, I think it's the same for Christians. It's like, 
the product of Christianity is, is, is the disciple. It's the man or the woman. Like it's about formation, right? It's about becoming who, who you're made to be. And um, then that person is the, like the mission is going to flow from that. And the effectiveness is going to flow for that. And, and again, like if you look at the person of St. Francis, like St. Francis prayed a bunch. Yeah. You know totally. what I mean? Like St. Francis prayed like a crazy amount and his mission was fruitful unto the end of time. Right. Like, and we can, we can see kind of, we can have be a little bit small sided with some of the problems and like try and like re- respond to like to two particular of little things in the present moment. And if it's at the cost of relationship and it's not through him with him in him, like, okay, we can be effective in this time and in these situations, but our fruitfulness is supposed to like the fruitfulness is the Lord's right. And perhaps his fruitfulness for us is like much larger than we ever thought, but that's going to be fruit of our own holiness and relationship. No, I'm soaking it all in. Father, I, I was just thinking about this earlier. Like, Father, innocent, you have like an experience with this. Like, this is like at the heart of what we have to teach the guys as they come in. Like, guys think that CFRs are hardcore. Guys think the CFRs like are very fruitful in their mission. Mm-hmm. And it's true. But the point is, is that that just doesn't, it's not a magic switch that guys get to be able to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go and be a part of these guys. And then all of a sudden I'm going to be like apostolically fruitful. Like it's years of death and years of formation and mm-hmm. years of letting go and years of getting over myself and years of, I mean, you know, so anyway, like yeah. it's beautiful to see these guys and their, their eyes open to be like, Oh, this is, this is, there's a lot more going on and there's a lot deeper of an invitation here for my own heart. And then just getting to go and do awesome mission things. Yeah. And there's an intensity and it's, it, it's a lot and it's every day. Right. And, and that's for any vocation. Like there's no, like, it's real. And every single day you get up and you have to say yes. And you have to say yes over and over again Mm -hmm. to the small things. I think that's where holiness is, but it's, it's intent. Right. Um, And so I, I agree. And I agree just the the reality that I, I, it's a joy to walk with young men in that, in that, in that reality that like, okay, like here's, here, here's what it means to live consecrated life. Um, But, but the formation needs to happen in every young man and woman's life to live in this place, to fight for this place and to know that it's possible for mm-hmm. all of us. And we know that formation is never over. Like it's never, there's never a point we reach, okay, I'm formed. Yeah. <laughs> Final hours. You know, yes. I mean, <laughs> no, cause like it's even Ongoing something where- formation. Yeah, having the privilege and joy working with guys who are temporary for profession. You know, guys come in when they first begin temporary profession, like I have it all figured out. This is how it's gonna happen. And then slowly but surely the cast or whatever it is that they have in their minds get gets broken. Just broken. <laughs> You know, and they realize, okay, like you see brothers, like for instance, brother Max, who's been doing this for like 20 something years and he's just humble and quiet about it. But it's that going to the fire every single day that's kind of formed his heart and to be over and over again. It's just like quiet and faithful. And it's okay. It looks different than what I thought it would look. But in him, I could see that there's something happening. Something real. And yeah. And it's an ongoing, ongoing, ongoing formation. So it's never a point in time where like, okay, I've, I've reached my final form. And that, that happens as, as we know is once we're in heaven, <laughs> you know, once we're finally through the purgation and then whatever we have to go through, hopefully not too long, but um, it's mm-hmm. one of those things that where, okay, finally in heaven, I'm home. And this is the place where, okay, it's all done. But until yeah. then it's going to be formative and, mm-hmm. and specifically ongoing. And there's always breakthroughs, right? right? That's the joy of it. The Lord, the Lord's never outdone in generosity, right? right? He always is calling us deeper and there's always more, right? And that's the, I think that's the journey of mm-hmm. believing that like, we're not done. Let's right. keep going. Like, right. It's because he loves us and pursues mm-hmm. us. Right. And that's why we started this kind of season of, of the podcast. It's like his mm-hmm. initiative. And now it's, it's our response. Mm-hmm. And, right. and what it was, it mean to be formed and to be in formation and have that be an ongoing process in our life. Mm-hmm. Amen. Did you just point at me as like the, uh, God has never done in generosity guy. Did you, but you've that's said how, that before. That's a, how cool is that to be that guy? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, yeah. You're like, like I remember you're, like the pocket guy and the relationship guy. It's good to be known. I, I love how we all like, hey, like like he says all the time. <laughs> like you've said that before. I'm like, hey, listen, like I, I, I learn things about myself. Like Ann says, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. I mean, it sounds good. I mean. But that's, I guess, and that's where why, why this kind of, before we kind of get very particular into habits for holiness, I do think this was an important conversation is just like none of this stuff, none of these steps like are fruitful if, if they're not done through him, with him, in him, right? If it's like inspired by him, for You're him. You're going back. He's that guy him. you have to point to. Through him, with him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm to, that guy now? <laughs> You're the yeah, doxology <laughs> guy. You're the doxology guy. <laughs> Thanks. Just don't sing it. <laughs> <gasps> Come on, shot. <laughs> You're the mean guy. <laughs> um, 
but like this, the are given our lives and this holiness and all this stuff. Like it's, if it's not done, if it is right. And, and that, I think that is a thing. It's like next to him for him, uh, inspired by him. Like, you know, it's like, it's gotta be through him with him and him. Right. And so it begins with this relationship with the Lord, um, with our beloved looking upon him, allowing him to live his life through us. And, and like, then we build from that foundation. Amen, bro. Yeah. Word? Word. Uh, Habits for Holiness. Father Mark, Mary, da- or Mark, Dash, Mary Ames. Thanks for pronouncing the dash. <laughs> um, we'll pray and then we'll go to Holy Hour. Yeah, we then, do that. Pray some more. Um, <laughs> we'll keep, yeah, we'll do some more praying. Father Pierre Toussaint, mm. insofar cool. as you made a, a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Which is steadily progressing. I like it. I feel like, yeah, that was a great episode. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Both of you guys. Both of you guys. <laughs> you Thank you. This started strong because you started out with an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really grateful to have you on the ensemble. I'm grateful to be a part of the ensemble, even though I'm a tree in the background. I'm continuing with the narrative that people feel sorry, sorry for me for some reason. <laughs> oh, man. Pray, bro. All right. <laughs> Pray. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah, right, Senor Chuckles. Lord God, we give you thanks. Uh, we give you thanks and we just, we invite you in a real way into our hearts, into our lives at this moment. Um, we pray that we may be always accessible to you, that you may come and speak to us and say whatever word you have in store for us. We may trust you, that we may give our hearts totally over to you, whatever that looks like. We just pray, Lord, that you would once again, just give us the grace and the strength and the ability just to live with you, through you, and in you, so that ultimately we may be built up in your love and be drawn closer to your heart. And we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Beautiful. That was oh a good God. prayer. Oh my God. That was Everything good I do and say, you guys are like, wow, you're good. You're okay. Like, <laughs> it's all right. You don't like that? <laughs> I actually don't. <laughs> I'm surprised. Um, what 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 make some announcements? Yeah, I just continue to be thankful for all our benefactors and all who make this possible. We do need your help. So uh spirit juice spiritjuice.org slash poco poco. Yeah. Right? Nice one. Nice one. Formation yeah. is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your habits for holiness. Oh, Surgeon Press. Anybody else you want to give Little some shout outs to? Picture okay. of him on the back. <laughs> shout outs to Christ in the City. Christ in the oh, City missionaries. On. I haven't seen you, haven't met the new team. Seton Fellows, Seton Fellows in the in the, in in the, the BX. Bronx, doing good things. I feel like somebody else. Anyway, Spirit Juice, thank you. Thanks, Rob. Rob. Thank you. Thanks, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, thank you. Everybody else, thank you. See Love you it. next week. God Hold bless. PT, thank you. Hold Hold PT, little guys. by little, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> but you did good. I'm <laughs> proud of you. Thanks. Surprised. Why are you surprised? I just said that to mess with you. Poco, poco. Peace. Bye. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well